morning, everybody. Can we take our seats? We're all standing, taking our seats. Amen. So this morning we're reading from Isaiah 45, 8, 12 to 14, 17 to 19. Open up, O heavens, and pour out your righteousness. Let the earth open wide, so salvation and righteousness can sprout up together. I, the Lord, created them. Amen. I am the one who made the earth and created people to live on it. With my hands, I stretched out the heavens. All the stars are at my command. I will raise up Cyrus to fulfill my righteous purpose and I will guide his actions. He will restore my city and free my captive people without seeking a reward. I, the Lord of heaven's armies, have spoken. This is what the Lord says. You will rule the Egyptians, the Ethiopians and the Sabians. They will come to you with all their merchandise and it will all be yours. They will follow you as prisoners in chains. They will fall to their knees in front of you and say, God is with you, and he is the only God. There is no other. But the Lord will save the people of Israel with eternal salvation throughout everlasting ages. They will never again be humiliated and disgraced. For the Lord is God. And he created the heavens and earth and put everything in place. He made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos. I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. I publicly proclaim bold promises. I do not whisper obscurities in some dark corner. I would not have told the people of Israel to seek me if I could not be found. I, the Lord, speak only what is true and declare only what is right. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Father God, thank you for another wonderful day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, we praise and worship and thank you so much for having us living in this wonderful country of Australia, this great state of Queensland and this wonderful city of Brisbane. And Lord, we thank you so much that we were led to come to this Water Springs Faith Church where we can learn the word of God from the anointed Pastor Dora. Father, we ask that this morning you get rid of the demons of distraction so that we can really concentrate and focus upon your anointed word from Pastor Dora. Get rid of those distractions because we came here to learn from your word to affect transformation in our lives. That's the whole sole purpose of being here this morning, Lord, is to be here, to learn, and to fellowship with you. And Father, we ask that you protect and bless Pastor Dora, the Water Springs Faith Church, and all the members of this church. And we ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says... Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Rest sir. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. God bless. Morning again, church. How are you doing today? Good. Let's all stand up together and praise our God. Today is today. Let's praise this one. Raise your voice up, church. Casting my cares aside, I'm leaving my past behind. I'm setting my heart and to you, Jesus. I'm reaching, I'm reaching my hand to yours. 
Believing, believing there's so much more. Come on, Lord. Knowing you have store for me. Yes, Lord. All good. Good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in me. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in me. I won't worry about tomorrow. Today's the day. Today's the day. I'm putting my hands aside. Believing the sun will shine. I'm giving my hopes and dreams to you, Jesus. so much knowing knowing of all you have been store for me is good is good is good today you have made i will rejoice and be glad today today is the day you have made i will rejoice and be glad in me i won't worry i won't worry Today, today is the day. I will stand. I will stand. upon you, upon generation and generation, the blessing of God is upon you all. You are blessed because you have come. We are here to worship God and here in this place, nothing is impossible. Come on, let's get together, church. Through you, I can do anything. Come on, church. I can do Declare, church. Nothing is impossible to you, blind eyes. They are all open in the name of Jesus. Cause I'm broken, I am living by faith. Come on, declare it. Nah. Yes, nothing is impossible. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. To you, Lord, nothing is impossible. Let's sing it. I'm not going to.
your ecclesia. We are your called out ones. We have been called out of this world to live in your world, in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We are the citizens of heaven, sons and daughters of the Almighty God, the inhabitants of holy Jerusalem, of Mount Zion.
do we have that we have not received everything that we have we have received Oh. 
Praise the Lord. My world is COVID free. <laughs> Amen. My world is COVID free. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. The evil one touches me not. Amen. Neither shall any place come near my dwelling. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You are blessed. You are, you are blessed this morning. You are blessed. All those of you that are watching online, you are blessed. Amen. We are the blessed of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Living in health and healing. That's our inheritance. Health and healing belong to us, belong to his church, belong to his sons and daughters, belong to his children. Amen. Amen. To understand divine health and divine healing, it's important that we understand the ministry, the mission of Jesus. There's a reason why Jesus came. We have to understand that God is the most purposeful being that you can ever find. There's not one thing that he does that has no purpose in it. Amen. And when we look at the day of Pentecost, when you read the book of Acts, you know, God is so powerful. You have to understand that God is movement. His power, his energy. And when he started moving, you know, their tongues couldn't catch up with God. You know, they were praying in tongues. They were going, you know, they were so invigorated. They were so power fused that the whole, the whole city heard them. You have to understand that God is power. God is power. Amen. Try to put your finger into the PowerPoint, and you may have a little bit <laughs> experience of the power of God. God is power. When we talk about health and healing, we're talking about physical power in your body. I was doing some research and doing some study, you know, and I noticed how the immune system of the body works. You know, of course, like we're living in this world, there are many things that we cannot see. And that's why even the doctors and, and the researchers, they have to use microscopes. You know, there's a whole world, there's a whole microscopic world that we cannot see. So it's so important that we understand that if you don't see it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So you have to understand that there are many, many tiny, minute things that we don't see, but they exist. And virus is one of them. And the thing is that God has created your body to be strong. Why? Because the most important scripture in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, that you were created in the image of God. Amen. Two times. Amen. You were not created in the image of a chimpanzee. You were created in the image of God. That means you were created to be like God. To be like him, spirit, soul, and body. 
And that's why there is power in your body. They call it the immune system. You know, when a virus enters into your body, your body, the immune system in your body, could swallow up that virus. And it will come in one way and come out the other way broken. Completely broken. <laughs> completely broken. And that's why even COVID cannot hurt everybody. The Bible says that the, the devil is like a lion seeking whom he may devour. Meaning that the devil can devour everybody. He can only devour the weak. And that's why as soon as I got saved, I chose to be strong. I chose to be a strong Christian. Amen? And when you're strong, when your spirit is strong, it's just like when the spirit departs from the body, the body falls flat on the floor, dead. And the same, and the same with, with a sick body. That's why Jesus said in my name, cast out devils. So cast out the spirit of infirmity. And as soon as that spirit of infirmity is cast out, that sickness dies. Hallelujah. And health springs back. Healing springs of life. Life comes back. Amen. And please, don't think that God is a spirit, so he's like bubbles, you know, just floating around, air bubbles. No, God is life. God is life. What is life? Life is energy. Life is power. What is health? Health is power. There's so much power in you, amen, that the virus, even when it enters into your body to try to multiply itself, gets swallowed up and broken and crushed. Praise the Lord. That's how our body is made to work. Can we say amen? That's why the word of God says, let the weak say that I am strong. Amen. Not I am weak. Let the weak say that I am strong. My body is fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. Hallelujah. So to understand Health and healing, we need to understand the mission and the ministry of Jesus. If you look at Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 19. Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 19. Now remember, Jesus was following the Holy Spirit. He was doing his mission. Where did he go? Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 17 in the King James. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Well, where did Jesus go on a Sunday? He went to church. Where did Jesus go on a Sunday? To Yamcha? No, to church. That's the first lesson that I learned. As soon as I became a Christian, I said to my in-laws, no more Yamcha on Sunday, I'm going to church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Now look at Jesus. He's very, very proactive. He went to church. He volunteered to read. He took the book. He found the place. The Lord that I know is very proactive. God is full of power. God is full of activities, full of actions, full of movements. Amen. What did he do? He located himself in the Bible. You need to find yourself in the Word of God. You need to find yourself in the Word of God. You know what happened to me as soon as I got saved? I opened the Bible. And I swallowed up every word. I read my Bible for the first time, even though I had been a Catholic for many years. I read the Bible for the first time, and the Bible was so real to me. More real to me than the air that I breathe. I couldn't get enough of it. Amen? 
And Jesus located himself in the Bible, just like every one of us. We need to locate and find ourselves in the Bible. And Jesus identified his mission. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me. You notice that Jesus was not shy. He was not shy. He was confident. He was confident to announce his mission. He was confident to declare what he knows to declare. And let's look at the mission of Jesus. I call it the sixfold mission. The sixfold mission of Jesus, and it's also the sixfold mission of every Christian, every church. Number one, to preach the gospel to the poor. The gospel means good news. What is good news to the sick? You don't have to be sick anymore. What is good news to the poor? You don't have to be poor anymore. What is good news to the brokenhearted? You don't have to be sorrowful anymore. Good news. Amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Every sick person is brokenhearted. Sickness can break the heart of a person and the heart of his family members, his friends. To heal, healing, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach what? Deliverance. Deliverance to the captives, so you are free from sickness, free from poverty, free from inferiority, free from the lies of the devil. Recovering of sight to the blind, so you can see. You can see the devils are real. You can see that the power of the Holy Spirit is in you. You can see the strength of the Lord is in you. Amen. To set at liberty them that are bruised, so you are not crushed anymore. The woman with a bent back, she was completely delivered from oppression, and she stood up straight. Praise the Lord. Amen. And the last one, to preach the acceptable year, dispensation, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So let me ask you, is there any rejection in God? Are you rejected or are you accepted? One more time. Are you rejected or are you accepted? Accepted. Amen. The sixfold mission of Jesus. Wow, that's awesome. To preach the word, to heal, to deliver, to give sight, praise the Lord, to give freedom, to give the gospel of salvation to all men with no discrimination of color, creed, gender, nor age. Wow, that's awesome. It's one thing to say it and one thing to do it. How did he do that? How did Jesus do that? It's been revealed to us in the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. You know, in China, you're not allowed to preach the beginning and the end. You're not allowed to preach from Genesis, and you're not allowed to preach from Revelation. The Word of God says that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. That's why there is a lot of power, a lot of revelation in the book of Genesis and in the book of Revelation. So let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 2 to 5. Now, a lot of people think that the book of Revelation is a doom and a gloom book, but it is not. The book of Revelation is a book of blessing. In fact, as soon as you open the book of Revelation, chapter 1, it's been promised because you're reading it, you are blessed. Amen. So the book of Revelation is full of blessings for those who read it. So if you look at Revelation chapter 5, verse 2 to 5, who is worthy to open the book? It's a question. Who is worthy to open the book and lose the seals thereof? Who is worthy? 
who is qualified to open the book and to lose the seal. So obviously, this is a very important book. So obviously, this is a life-changing book. This is a world-changing book. And no man in heaven, we're talking about in heaven, no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the sea, was able to open the book, not even to look there it. And then look at verse 4. And John the apostle, he said, and I wept much. I wept. I cried. I mourned. Because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. So obviously that book is very, very important to the church. Because that's what John the Apostle represents. Definitely that book is very, very important. And don't forget, he's living in the time and the age when the church was very, very much prosecuted persecuted. And he's living in the time and the age when the gospel is being preached. The church is still to grow and to multiply. So obviously that book is very, very important. And since it could not be opened, the seal could not be unloosed. John cried much. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. That is speaking John's language, because he is a Jew. Hath prevailed. Hath prevailed. That's one thing that Christians, that we need to do if you want victory in your life. To prevail, that means to continue in the faith, to continue serving God, to continue in your faithfulness, to continue in your energy and in your power and in your service unto God. I'm not backsliding because I'm not that stupid. It's stupid to backslide. It's stupid to be lethargic when it comes to serving the Lord. I want a lot of energy. I want a lot of power. How many of you want that? Amen. A lot of energy, a lot of power in my mind, in my soul, and in my body, in my spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. Look at that. He said, have prevailed and what? And to loose <laughs> the seven seals thereof. Can somebody bring me the water? <laughs> Prevail to open the book and to loose the seven seals. Now, there are things in your life that you cannot unloose until you have prevailed. To overcome depression, you have to prevail in faith. To overcome sickness, you have to prevail. Amen. Hallelujah. So lift up your hands and say with me, I am prevailing by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of God, by the strength of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to pay attention together with me. The elder said, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But then, if you continue to read, if you continue to read in Revelation chapter 5, verse 6, Revelation chapter 5, verse 6, that lion of the tribe of Judah did not appear as the lion, he appeared as the lamb. Can you see that? In Revelation chapter 5, verse 6, stood a lamb as had been slain. So that obviously is something that is important, something that is powerful. So now let's go back to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 13 to 14. 
Luke chapter 2, verse 13 to 14. So we're talking about opening that book. We are talking about loosing the seals. And then they said, the lion of the tribe of Judah is coming. But the lion of the tribe of Judah appeared as a lamb that had been slain. And if you look at Luke chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, look at the will of God. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts. We're talking about why Jesus was born, why Jesus came. And suddenly, with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host saying, praising God, glory to God in the highest. And then, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. That's the will of God. Are you sure? No judgment? Did God judge sinners? Doesn't God judge sinners? What about the wrath of God? Peace on earth, good will to men. How did God implement that? How did he implement his good will to sinners? Remember, in the times of Noah, the flood came. Because of all the sin on the earth, corrupting the whole universe, corrupting even the genes of mankind. How did God implement that goodwill toward all men? If you look at Luke chapter 4, verse 17, we need to discern this morning is it the will of God to judge? Or is it the will of God to save? If you look at Luke chapter 4, verse 17, Jesus found the place. What is that place? Isaiah 61, verse 1 and 2. And he read it. He read Isaiah 61, verse 1, and he stopped deliberately he stopped at the acceptable year of the Lord he stopped and if you look at Isaiah 61 verse 2 that was not even the end of that verse the end of that verse is and the day of vengeance of our God Jesus stopped at the acceptable year of the Lord. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And then he continued to read the acceptable year of the Lord. And he stopped there without continuing with Isaiah 61 verse 2 and the year of vengeance of our God. That's why the angels announced Peace on earth and goodwill to men. So that tells you and I, we need to have goodwill toward all men. Like Jesus. We are not living in the wrath of God. We are not living in the judgment of God. What was Jesus doing? He was bringing in mercy and grace. Unlike the generation of Noah, why was the flood, why, why, did, the flood, why did the flood come? Why? Don't forget. Because the demons were having sex with women and reproducing what they called giants. There was corruption in the human genes. And why was it so important that God had to send the flood? Why? Because Jesus had to come as a man. 
the whole nation of Israel was separated by the law, by the blood of the animals, so that the Messiah could come in the midst of me. Do you understand that? Do you see how important it is? And that's why we cannot interpret the New Testament the same way that we interpret the Old Testament. We have to evaluate the scriptures with the purpose of God. So Jesus had been designed, had been planned to bring in mercy and grace. Say with me, mercy. Say with me, grace. So God's heart is not to condemn, but to save. God's heart is not to condemn, but to save. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus came as our kinsman redeemer. Now you have to understand that God is the judge. He is 100%, 100% righteous and just. He could not just let sinners go. He could not just let sin go. So Jesus, he came. He became the serpent. Remember, Moses threw his rod in front of Pharaoh and the magicians. And what happened to his rod? It became a serpent. And what happened? That serpent swallowed up all the serpents that came from the magicians. What did that tell us? That is telling us that Jesus, when he is on the cross, he became sin. He became sin for us. He took all of our sin. He took all the curses. Serpents represent sin, represent the works of the devil. Jesus talked of that. The serpent swallowed up all the other serpents. Swallowed up all of our sin. Swallowed up all the works of the devil. And went all the way to the pit of hell. And by his sacrifice, by his total obedience, by his commitment to God the Father, by his love for us, he became resurrected. He became the resurrected Christ, overcoming sin and death. Hallelujah. He got the resurrected life right in the midst of hell. He got the resurrection power right in the midst of hell and death. And he turned around and he gave it to us. And he said, in my name, cast out devils. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, shout victory. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why in the book of Revelation, blessing and honor and glory and power, Reve uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 13, blessing, honor, and glory and power be unto him that sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Unto the Lamb. And you see that in Revelation chapter 5, verse, thir uh, verse 12, worthy is the Lamb that was slain, worthy to do what? To receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. There is power in that lamb. There is power in that ransom. There's power in that substitute. There is power in that sacrifice. Can we say amen? Glory be to God. Now let's look at what's that power. What is that power? Okay, what is that power? If you look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. How many of you know that you have an enemy? How many of you have heard the voice of the devil accusing you? Judging you? Condemning you? How many of you have heard the voice of the devil judging someone else in your mind? Accusing somebody else in your mind. He is a devil. And his name is called the accuser. His name is called the accuser of the brethren. 
If you look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 to 11. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. Wow. All of these are very powerful statements. All of this had come as a result of what? Because for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, who accused them before our God day and night. So all this power has been released as a result of the accuser defeated by the Lamb. Hallelujah! Praise God! Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! If you look at verse 11, the Holy Spirit made it very, very clear to us. They overcame him, referring to the accuser, Lucifer, Satan. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. The sacrificial blood of Jesus. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the selfless, sinless, perfect sacrifice. The place of victory over the accuser. The place of victory over the accuser is the place of victory over sickness, sin, and death. You're looking for healing. You're looking for help. You're looking for strength. You're looking for power. Is in that place when the accuser is thrown down. Hallelujah. Can we say amen? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56. This has got to be one of the sermons that I've never preached. This has got to be one of the sermons that's going to last forever and ever. It's got so much, so much revelation that the Holy Spirit had given us. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 56. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 56. Listen to this. The sting. How many of you have ever felt the sting of a bee? Or the sting of a serpent? That's where the poison is. That's where the pain is. The sting of death is sin. So sin is like a serpent that stings you and brings death, sickness, and the strength of sin, how can the sin become strong, is the law. The more you are condemned, the more you will sin. The more you are accused, the more you will sin. The more you're beaten up because of sin, the more you will sin. Read that again with me. One, two, three. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is in the law. The law kills. The spirit gives life. Do you get that? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we say amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God, hallelujah, praise God. Now look at Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 to 10. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 to 10. So powerful, so powerful. Referring to the whole Sanhedrin in heaven, or the heavenly host, and they sung a new song saying, a new song, we're talking about in heaven, a new song. You are worthy, referring to the Lamb. You are worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Why? You are worthy means you are qualified. Why? Why was the Lamb qualified? Why was the Lamb worthy? For, that means because, for you were slain and hath redeemed us to God by your blood 
out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Now, let me ask you a question. Is this about the church or about Israel? Come on, tell me. About church or about Israel? It has to be about the church. Because it's every tongue and kindred and people and every nation. So it's about the church. That's the ministry of Jesus. Why did Jesus come? To start his church. What is the mission of the church? To preach the good news. Mercy. Grace. You don't have to be a sinner anymore. That you can be saved. You are not rejected anymore. You are accepted in the beloved. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And stop there without the vengeance of God. Why? Because the church is the age of mercy. It's the age of grace. So what is the Holy Spirit? It's the spirit of grace. It's the spirit of mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I know that some of you are still not that convinced. <laughs> Can we continue with that? Um, go to verse 10. Continue with verse 10. And has made us, who is in the us? Who is in the us? Come on, lift up your hands if you know that you are in there. And has made us unto our God kings. Kings. Priests. Can you be a king and a sinner? No. Can you be a priest and a sinner at the same time? No. No. So let me ask you a question. Once you are born again, are you a sinner or are you a saint? One more time. Are you a sinner or are you a saint? A saint. And continue to read. And we shall reign on the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, shout victory. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So it's about the church. It's not about Israel. Jesus was worthy to take and to open the book of victory, the gospel, the good news for the church to reveal to us our victorious position. To reveal to us the judgment of God over sin and death and demons. That's what the book of Revelation is about. The book of Revelation reveals to you the power of God over sin and death and demons. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we say amen? Glory be to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you read the book of Revelation and you start with that, start with the, the seals, breaking the seven seals, you notice it starts with come and see four times. How many of you have heard of the four horsemen of the apocalypse? Come on, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. I want you to know that the four horsemen of the apocalypse, they are demons. They are devils. They are not God sent angels. Four times. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see. And the name of that book is Revelation. Revelation means review. It means come and see. It has been shown unto you. It has been revealed to you. Revealed to you what? Demonic activities. Revealed to you what? Sin and death. Whatever has been revealed, you have the power to overcome. The devil's power is in darkness. It's in hiding. 
You know, with COVID-19, the reason why it is such a, um, uh, I don't want to use the word power. The reason why COVID-19 is, is difficult for the doctors, okay, difficult for the health department, is because it gets into hiding, and you don't know. And you don't know when it has got into that person's body, the person does not know because there are no symptoms and you can't tell. The devil, COVID-19, that spirit of infirmity, that demon called COVID-19, he goes into hiding and he goes into deceptions until he multiplies himself and takes over. Then the person realizes, oh, I've got a demon in me. I mean, come on, let's face it. So many Christians, you know, they just don't take God seriously. Don't take God's warning seriously. Don't take God's blessing seriously until something bad. Oh, has it gone to so bad now? That's COVID-19. It's a spy. It goes into the body. And the body thinks that it's a friend. But it's a traitor. Whatever, whatever is exposed, then is conquered. Once it has brought into the light, then the power comes, and the power destroys it. Amen. Demons work in darkness, but God works in the light, and the light will always overcome darkness. Can we say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the power of the book of Revelation. It exposes all the lies and all the works of the devil to declare God's judgment over them. You have your God-given authority, God-given power to bind the devils, to rebuke them, to cast them out in the name of Jesus. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. And that's why the Lamb of God had prevailed in order that the seals could be broken and all the works of the devil could be reviewed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, Jesus is the sacrificial lamb. He is also called our kinsman redeemer. So he is the one who says, come on, give me all your sin. Give me all your sickness. Give me all your sorrows. Give me all your pain. I take them all. I take them all for you. Because sin activates the law of cursing. Sin activates the law of sin and death. So devils have a legal, a legal stand to attack sinners. But Jesus said, I'm taking all your sin, I'm taking all your sickness, I'm taking them all, and I'm here. I receive God's judgment. I receive the wrath of God for you, in your place, on your behalf. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why he said, if you would believe in me, you would never die. Hallelujah. That's why it is written by his stripes, we are healed. He took all the judgment. He took all the curse that should rightfully fall on sinners. He took them all. And that's why you have to raise your hand and say, Jesus I receive you as my redeemer. I receive you as my personal sacrifice. I receive you. I receive what you did for me on Calvary, on the cross. Amen. So when you have made a mistake, when you have a bad thought, when you have an, a wrong attitude, when you have a bad conduct, don't. Condemn yourself, because then you stand together with the devil to condemn yourself. What you should do is that you go to Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, that you have taken away my sin. You have taken away my own nature. Amen. All things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I'm a saint now. I'm a child of God. Amen. I have God's holy nature. 
Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I have a born again spirit, a holy soul, and a healthy body. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. The reality of your salvation. Let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Let the weak say that I am strong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's the reality of the substitution. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the good news is that not only did Jesus deliver us from sin and guilt and punishment, but he promoted us to be his victors. You know how many of you know that if you've committed a crime, you know you would be sentenced to jail? And it's a good thing that you could be delivered from jail and, you know, continue to live your life. But that's not good enough for Jesus. So not only did he deliver us from jail, not only did he deliver us from punishment, the punishment of sickness and death and poverty and strife, he promoted us from the place of a victim to the place of a victor. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So don't just lie down and say, well, the doctor says that I have this problem. The doctor says that I have that problem. I don't know. I don't know. I'll just wait and see. I don't know. I'll just wait and see. No, no. Don't wait and see. Bind the devil. Bind that spirit of infirmity. How many of you know that every virus has a life to it? Do you know that? Virus, bacteria, they are not just like these flowers that have no life. Virus, bacteria, what do they have? They have life. And they seek to multiply in your body and take over. That's what sickness is about. So when you are fighting sickness, you are fighting a demonic life. You are fighting a demonic life that wants to multiply and eat up your lungs and take the place of all the, you know, the breathing mechanism in your body. When I was fighting migraine, I wasn't fighting just pain, the feeling of pain. No, we're not into feeling, we're into healing. Don't be so caught up into feeling that you lose your healing. When I was fighting migraine, I wasn't fighting the pain. I was fighting that demon called migraine. When you're fighting tuberculosis, you are not just fighting a sickness. You're fighting that life, that demon that is called tuberculosis. And you need to fight it. You need to curse it. You need to rebuke it. You need to cast it out. And when the spirit is cast out, as Jesus had demonstrated, the sickness leaves and the body recovers. Can we say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. So why did Jesus promote us to be victorious? Why? Because God wants a victorious church. God does not want his church to be weak and sick. For I'm building a people of power. Right? A people of power. How many of you, father and mother, or grandfather and grandmother, want to have a sick and a weak child? Yes or no? No. No. You need to contend for the power that Jesus had given unto you. Amen. Don't look for feelings. Look for the truth. The Word of God. Look for the Word of God. There's power in the Word, especially in the end times. The more pressured it is, the more Word you need. And the Word will bounce back. The Word of God will talk to you. The Word of God will talk to you. The Word of God will minister to you. The Word of God will give you dreams. The Word of God will, will give you prayers. Can we say amen? 
Where's, where's that courage from? It's from the Word of God. Where's that faith from? It's from the Word of God. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Word. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. The Word of God is your power. The Word of God is your immunity. Let's look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. That's how Jesus sees us. That's his image of his church. Look at how Jesus sees you and see yourself through his eyes. Too many Christians, they see themselves as sinners in the eyes of Jesus. And that's why when they pray, it's always, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, help me that I don't sin anymore. Oh, Jesus, help me not to sin anymore. The church is not the place for you to be full of sin consciousness. The church is the place for you to be filled with victory consciousness, God consciousness, salvation consciousness. Can we say amen? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I am who I am by the grace of God. I'm not a sinner. I am a glorified saint. If you keep seeing yourself a sinner, you pray like this. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, I'm not worthy. Oh, all your prayers, 30 years of prayers will be, oh, help me not to sin. (laughs) 30 years, 40 years. Oh, God, help me not to sin. I'm not good enough for you, oh, God. I'm not good enough for you. How many of you? (laughs) Get rid of that kind of prayers. They are offensive. Why? Because they cancel what Jesus has done for you. Let the weak say that I am strong. If you believe in what you say and do not doubt what you say, you will have whatsoever you say. Oh, something's wrong with my eyes. Oh, something's wrong with my stomach. Praise the Lord. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My body is vigorous. My body is strong. My body serves the purpose of God. Lungs, come on. Shape up. Serve God. Amen. I'm serving the Lord, playing my guitar and singing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How many of you know that if your lungs are not doing well, you can't sing? (laughs) So you better start singing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus' vision for his church. What is his church like? Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. Somebody says, but I don't have the faith. I don't have your faith, Pastor Dora. I don't have your faith. Well, the word of God says freely. <laughs> Freely, you have received. Freely, give. You don't earn it. You just have to receive it. Can we say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Be simple enough to just receive. My job is to lay hand. God's job is to heal. My job is to believe. God's job is to manifest to miracles. Can we say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at Luke chapter 11, verse 20. But with the finger of God, I with the finger of God, Jesus speaking, cast out devils. Let me ask you, has Jesus cast the devils out of you, out of me? Absolutely. Amen. So what does it mean? No doubt the kingdom of God is come upon you. Come on, lift up your hands and say with me, the kingdom of God is upon me. One more time, the kingdom of God is upon me. Amen. When God is for me, who can be against me? No weapons of the enemy formed against me can prosper. Every tongue that rises up against me in judgment I condemn. So don't you join the devil and condemn yourself. Praise God. 
Amen. How many of you believe that the kingdom of God is greater? The kingdom of light is over and above the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of life and righteousness over and above the kingdom of sin and death. Hallelujah. Let's look at the origin of sickness. Look at Job chapter 2 verse 7. Job chapter 2 verse 7. I know, I know, I know. You know, sometimes you are still confused, you know. Didn't God send sickness to kill? Didn't God send sickness in the Old Testament to kill? Well, let's look at Job. It's in the Old Testament. Job chapter 2 verse 7. I still have revelation to give you, okay? So hold your seat back with me. So when Satan fought from the presence of the Lord and smut Job with sore, with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown, referring to his head. So who smut Job with sickness and disease? Come on, tell me. One more time. One more time. How could Satan be in the presence of God? Well, somebody tells me there are no demons in church. Yes, there are. <laughs> where sin is, where devils are. We live in a sinful world. It may not be your personal sin, but we live in a sinful world. So why was the devil, why was Satan allowed to do that? Because of the presence of sin. Sin activates the law of sin and death, the law of cursing. Death is capital punishment. Isn't that right in a human court? I'm so glad that Hitler had died. I'm so glad that Mussolini had died. Stalin had died. Death is the way to put an end to evil. And that's why our salvation is in our lifetime, not after we have died. Rituals, religion, the Catholic Church, they once they used to believe that you can pray for somebody who had died and you could give the church money for your relatives or friends, your dear ones who had died. And the nuns and the monks would pray for them and they would be able to go to heaven. Let me ask you, is that true? No. Because your salvation is your choice. Your salvation is your choice. Jesus had done the work, and he said, you choose. Because God is love, and there is no love if there is no freedom. So God has given us freedom. It's your freedom to love him. It's your freedom to follow him. What is Job's greatest failure? Job's greatest failure is a lack of discernment. He thought that God was punishing him. He thought that God was bringing him sickness and disease. He thought that he's a victim. Yes, he admitted that God is powerful, God is the highest. And then he said, but you know, I'm nobody in the hands of God. And God had chosen to smut me. Why did he do that? He's not fair to me. That's Job's problem. He felt, he felt, and he thought that he is a victim of God's unrighteousness. If you think that God had sent you sickness to teach you a lesson, if you think that God had sent sickness to judge you, then you have been deceived. And you have been God's accuser. You know, the devil is is the accuser. He's the one accusing you in the presence of God, and he's also the one accusing God in your presence. God has never sent you anything bad. Sin activates the law of sin and death. There is the law of blessing, and there's the law of cursing. And that's why Jesus had come to give grace and mercy 
Amen? So that we could be delivered from the law of cursing into the law of blessing. Can we say amen? And that's why Romans chapter 8 begins with, there is therefore now no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. Can we say amen? You have come into the law of the spirit of life. Amen. That has dominion over the law of sin and death. Let's look at Revelation chapter 6, verse 7 and 8. Let's look at the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Well, are you sure that they are not God sent angels? Yes, I'm going to show it to you. How many of you want to know? Let's look at Revelation chapter 6, verse 7 to 8. And when he, who is this he? Come on, church, who is this he? The Lamb. The Lamb of God, Jesus. When he had opened the fourth seal, because we don't have time to go through the other seals, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. Okay, what's the cherubim saying to John? Come and see. Come on, I'm showing you. Come and see. Okay, the seal is now broken. We can see it. Come and see. And what did John see? And I looked and behold, I looked and I behold a pale horse. His name that sat on him was death and hell followed him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, with the beasts of the earth. Can you see that? Well, you say to me, well, Pastor Dora, so does God use devils? Yes. Does God use devils? Yes. Is in that law of sin and death. When sin activates that law, demons are released. That's why the Word of God keeps telling us, do not sin. And continue to read Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. I'm reading to you from the Amplified Bible. To kill with the sword and with famine and with plague, pestilence, disease. That's what COVID-19, pestilence. So it's a devil. It's not a God-sent angel. I think some of you are still saying, really? Really? Yes. <laughs> Look at Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, the angel. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Say with me, the bottomless pit. Is called hell. He opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke, darkness, out of the pit, and as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So what came out of that pit were demons, locusts, demons. You sound... Okay, i show you. Look at verse 11. The same chapter, verse 11. Verse 11. Can we go to verse 11? And they, referring the lo to the locusts, referring to the demons, had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. That's Lucifer. That's Satan. Abaddon means doom. Apollyon means the destroyer. So the destroyer is not God nor his angels, but the destroyer is Satan, is Lucifer, and his team of demons released in the end times to kill 
with sword, with hunger, with death, and with the beast. Amen. Can you see that? And you can find the same word Abaddon in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 20. Hell and Abaddon, hell and destruction, relating to the work of hell and the works of hell. Now, let's look at the part of Jesus. Why is it so important? I'm showing you that sickness is the death. Sickness is the work of demons. Until you know that, until you're convinced of that, you will not get divine healing. You will not walk in divine health. You will still accept sickness. You will still think that being a mortal is okay to be sick. From time to time, you have to be sick. If you look at Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. You know that there are preachers that are jailed for preaching this kind of message? There are preachers that are run, run away from churches because they are preaching this kind of message. This message is a life-changing message. It's a very powerful message. It's bought by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, referring to the fact that we have, you know, a mortal body, he also himself, referring to Jesus, likewise took part of the same, that's referring to his incarnation, okay? That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Who has the power of death? Who has the power of death? The devil. God has the power of life. God has the power of life. God has the power of life. Hallelujah. And life always destroys death. That's the resurrection. There's so much life coming out of Jesus, that his body became resurrected. Amen. Hallelujah. So what's the reason for the incarnation? You tell me. What's the reason for the incarnation? Why couldn't Jesus come as an angel? So that he could have a body. A body that could go through death. It's only when his body... Only when his body goes through death that he might destroy him who has the power of death. So the reason for his incarnation, the reason for him to come with his mortal body, it's so that he can go through death to destroy it for you and for me. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So every time when you look at your body, think about Jesus. Think about Jesus. Amen. Your body. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So no more confusion and no more deception. Come on, say to the person next to you, no more confusion and no more deception. <laughs> Amen. Fight the devil. Fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Another scripture to give to you, 1 John 3, 8. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. What purpose? For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. So if your body is fighting to swallow up, every virus to destroy it, you better be fighting against the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me, I have a strong spirit, a holy soul, and a healthy body. I don't have to be sick. I don't choose to be sick. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that? Are you okay to say that with me one more time? I don't have to be sick. I don't choose to be sick. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Why, why is that so? Because with your heart, you believe unto righteousness, 
and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Why is it so important? Because Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be sin for us. Why? What's the purpose? That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not so that you can earn to be righteous. No, it's so that you might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lift up your hands and say with me, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So don't live in sin consciousness. Amen. Say with me, I have been washed, sanctified, justified in the name of Jesus. By the Holy Spirit. So let me ask you a question. Are you good enough for God to heal you? Are you worthy to be healed? Does God want to heal you? Does God want to keep you strong and healthy? Does God care about your body? Do you have power over sin and death? Do you have power over sickness and disease? Do you have power over viruses? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be it unto you according to your word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. Bind the strong man and you will spoil his house. Amen. Bind the strong man, the spirit of infirmity, and take back your health, take back your vigor, take back your youth. How many of you know that Adam, Adam, even after he had sinned, it's difficult for him to die. He lived 930 years. Wow. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know that those times will be, will be returned back to us. The Bible says that during the time of the, of the reign of Christ, you know, even a hundred is like a young child. Amen? So we need to, yes, thank you, Lord. Don't think like a fallen man. Because you are not. You are not a fallen sinner. You are a born-again saint. Come on, say with me. I'm not a fallen sinner. I am a born-again saint. So don't think like a fallen sinner. But think like a victorious, triumphant saint of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I have the music team on stage? Praise the Lord. Amen. Can I ask you to stand with me? We're going to sing this song together. Rejoice in your salvation. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. Praise the Lord. Rejoice in your salvation. Rejoice. Rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. Say to the person next to you, rejoice in your salvation. Say to the person next to you, I'm so glad that I'm saved. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's what money cannot buy. Amen. We have to rebuke that spirit of negativity. If you are, you are the kind of person who is always very cautious, very negative, and you dare not say anything positive. Oh, I dare not say that I won't get sick. I dare not say. Why? Who's going to condemn you for saying it? Oh, I dare not say that I'm going to have a lot of business. Oh, I dare not say that I'm going to be rich. Why? What are you afraid of? Is it your pride that you may be caught wrong? Well, Jesus is never wrong. Jesus is never wrong. Say to the person next to you, boast in the Lord.
bring you your possession. You say nothing, you have nothing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look what the Lord has done. Amen. That's what you're confessing. You have what you say. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song together. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together. Yes. I have the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Jesus in my heart and I'm so happy so very happy I've got the love of Jesus in my heart I've got the joy 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 down in my heart down in my heart down in my heart I've got the joy 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 down in my heart down in my heart to stay come on Jesus in my heart and I'm so happy so very happy I've got the love of Jesus in my honor man honor man I've got the joy joy dang in my heart dang in my heart I've got the joy 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 dang in my heart dang in Jesus in my heart. One more time. I've got the joy, 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 joy. Dang in where? Dang in my where? Dang in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy. Dang in my heart. Dang in my heart to stay. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you have the love of Jesus? The love of Jesus in your heart, that's the Holy Spirit. The love of Jesus is the Holy Spirit in you. You don't have to doubt your salvation no more. Don't have to doubt your salvation no more. Don't allow the devil to bring you down, to accuse you. God has unconditionally accepted you loved you, cheering you on, raising you up, guiding you every step along the way. Yes. Believe in His love. Believe in His love. Believe in His love. He loves you with an everlasting love. Get rid of all the conditions. He's not evaluating you to see whether you can make it. No. He's empowering you. He is empowering you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Deep and wide, deep. 
and why there's a fountain flowing deep and wide deep and wide deep and why there's a fountain flowing deep and wide deep and wide deep and why there's a fountain flowing deep and wide deep and wide deep and why there's a fountain flowing deep and wide yes holy spirit you are the fountain you are the fountain in us you are the fountain that never dries up you are the life that never comes to an end oh yes we are so grateful so grateful so grateful hallelujah hallelujah let's sing i exhort you i exhort thee i exhort given unto us for your love that is so deep and so wide thank you precious Holy Spirit for your truth that never fails that's always victorious and triumphant we have eaten of your word we have drunk of your spirit. Thank you. Thank you. We are your mighty army. The warriors of your kingdom. The victors of Christ. Thank you. 
Lord bless all my dear brothers and sisters all those that are present here all those that are absent all those who are watching on the internet all those who are not watching yes Lord your grace your unconditional love to melt the hardness of hearts to give light to the ignorant to destroy the darkness of the evil one thank you thank you eternally a big thank you to you the Lamb of God the Lamb upon the throne eternally grateful the Lord a big hand of praise. He is so good. So good. So good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Please be seated. Feel free to give your tithes and your offering. Uh, come to the front uh, proactively giving. You know, you have a covenant of prosperity. The world talks about depression and inflation. But no, you don't belong to the world. You don't partake of the curses. How do we not partake of the curses? By being in faith and not in fear. By thinking victory and not defeat. Amen. So you partake of the Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit Himself. Thank you, Jesus. We have to understand that life begets life. Evil also begets evil. So don't follow the thoughts of the devil. Don't follow his spirit. Don't follow his trend of thoughts. Thank you, Father God. Follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit, their thoughts, their ideas. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, so should we have the women's ministry to come and announce yes Haley give the Lord a big hand for what she, he is doing amen that church so just an announcement on the ladies ministry Saturday the 12th of September from 2 to 4 so we are doing some African violet planting and desert rose. So we're going to work our green thumbs. Amen. <laughs> so all the ladies are invited. Please bring your friends, your family, and we can have a good time of fellowship, one with the other. So I'd love every lady to please participate. Hallelujah. Amen. Who's coming? Who's coming? Who's coming? Who's coming? Hands up. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we're in for a good time, ladies. Amen. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to tell you that the first photo, those are my African violets. <laughs> so it's from, uh, I'm going to demonstrate and show you how to start with a leaf. So just with a leaf. And then it's from that leaf that you have a, a baby plant. So it's propagation. So from a leaf to a baby plant, that's the second one. And I'm also um, going to show you how to do what's it called wick watering. So that means you don't have to water it every day. So you build a reservoir at the bottom. <laughs> so from a baby plant, you have an adult plant that's got flowers. So you can actually... That's called prosperity. Praise the Lord. Amen. From one to many. Amen. And then Haley is going to, that's the desert rose. From a seed, once again, one to many. The principle of seeds to harvest. So it's going to be a great time. Enjoy your, 
Enjoy yourself and bring your friends and your family. Amen? Any other announcements? Okay, so um, David is praying. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand for David. Amen. Lord, I just thank you that we, we just can't thank you enough. Lord, I, w I would say there was the way the word has been preached and given to us today, it's been like someone turning on the floodlights. Your word corrects us, it, it encourages us. But I, my prayer is that for everybody to be blessed, Lord, this week, Lord, that the word would um, filter through us, through our mind into our spirit, Lord, that we'd start living it, living it out, working it out in our life. We would see ourselves as, as you see us, Father God. You have sent your son, Jesus, to take back everything that was stolen through sin, through the fall of Adam. And Lord, we know that you've given us all, all good things. You've, you withhold nothing from your, your hand, Father God. Help us to be unashamedly to take those gifts, the things that you promised us. Lord, help us to walk in it. And Lord, I pray for this church and the church Australia-wide that we, we are soldiers with the word of God in our mouth, the two-edged, sharper than any two-edged sword. And I pray that we would be uh, wise in how we deliver it in the word, the world, Father God. Lord, that we have a heart for one another mostly, but especially a love that you have for the unsaved. Father God, that we're ready in season and out of season as Christians. We're, not, we're, we're always looking up and out, reaching out to people. And I pray that we'll be led by the Holy Spirit, not just doing things because they're a good idea. We really need to be led by the Spirit of God to different people that cross our path. Lord, help us to be sensitive to when, what you're doing in different situations as we go through about our week, that, that you bless the work of our hands, that you would bless going in and going out, that you bless each family and their children for the youngest to the oldest member of each family household. And I pray and agree with Pastor Dora too that this COVID, I speak to you, you're not above us, you are under our feet, you are nothing compared to God. You bow down. You will touch nobody in this church. You will touch not even this, the youngest to the oldest. You have no right. And I declare it, the blood of Jesus Christ is against you, COVID-19. You, no, you have no place in our body. In Jesus' name, I declare your, your blessings, your richest blessings. And we thank you again for your word that's been preached this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.